Hi everyone, welcome to Boxing Science. Not subscribed yet? Please hit the subscribe button. Today we've got a special guest taking uh, Callum Beard and Nikolai Campbell through uh, like speed, power, and explosiveness. It's Ben Simons. I've followed Ben for quite a while on Instagram. His Instagram tag is Ben the Bounce, and he basically does what he says on the tin. Uh, really fast, explosive, and he's a, a speed and power specialist, but he's also an athlete as well. Uh, bobsleigh athlete. Is two-time Olympian, silver medalist in the World Cup as well, and it's great to get him in to get a different perspective on how to uh, generate force and express that into fast and explosive actions. This is a four-part series, so here's Ben introducing what we're going to be doing in this video. First, we've got a static jump series where we're working predominantly on concentric power and giving the lads a chance to learn. So it's it's a lunge with a twist like that, and then you come straight across. Yeah. Right, so med balls are different weights, so pick whichever one you fancy. We've got a nine and eight and a five. You pick the short straw, you got a heavy one. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. So you go across the lead knee. There you go. So we're really opening the hip up here. We're getting the lumbar moving as well, because we're going to be doing some single leg jumps. I just want to get that range of movement. It's good. Okay, That's cool. Low. When you go backwards now, just have it above head. Yeah. Go straight down, and you should feel a real stretch across there. Like so yeah, you do it reverse now. Yeah, but just straight above. So push it right up to the ceiling. We'll now nah, keep it above head. There you go. So we're just aiming to stretch out your hip flexors here, really. That's it, and just try and like push off the front leg. So you push in from there, like through there. Perfect, yeah. All right, we're just gonna get a little bit bouncy, so I'm gonna start off with pogos. When we do these, the first set, we're gonna do them quite flat-footed. So I'm sure with Danny, you've been doing stuff where you've been picking your toes up and popping them into the floor. We're gonna start off quite flat-footed because we're trying to get the glutes in a little bit more. So you're almost gonna roll over your foot like that. I don't want it really high intensity. That's it. Swing your arms a bit. Perfect, there you go. Just one length. <laughs> so obviously the lads coming from boxing, they really want to put their, their, their toes down. They really want to be reactive. A lot of the time what I find with people that inherently do that is they, they tend to overload the anterior chain a little yeah, bit more. Yeah. So if we get a little bit more glutes before we start using the ankle complex, yeah. that usually works quite well. So now we're gonna start popping the ankles a little bit more. So I really want them hooked up to the ceiling and popped in, ball of the foot. So I'll demonstrate on the side. Like that, so we're really starting using the calves now. You know the one. One length. Start using your arms as well. There you go, that'll help you out. I thought you said Callum couldn't jump. Yeah. It's no, nice. I'm with a calf. <laughs> All calves. Yeah. So you're the powerhouse and you're the bouncer. Um, yeah, uh, no. uh, he's, more, he's springy than me. He's springy really? Yeah, All right, cool. Yeah, he can jump high. All right, cool. Well, we'll find out about that now then. So we're gonna we're gonna do a couple of jumps. So we're gonna we're gonna do the static and the counter movement like you talked about. Because I just want to see where the lads are at. Then we're going to move on to the seated jumps, see if I can develop that a bit more. So I want two jumps off you fellas, you'll do one, other guy will go and then you'll do the, the next version. So first one's just the, the squat jump. So you can go from static, hands on hips, no counter movement, straight up like that. Then the next one, you're going to dip into it, so counter movement, like that. So Callum go first mate, from a static. Yeah. Good mate. Okay, take a little rest. Nikolai, do this first one. Yeah, just want a bit of rest between them. Straight up, mate. Go. Yeah. She so sees already trying to use a cat movement. Yeah. Because you're you're quite springy. Yeah. You're in static and you're already trying to dip into it to jump. Yeah. Like I don't mind that. It, it messes up the test for me a little bit, but I know that you're trying to use those complexes that we're trying to develop. So, you go for the cat movement now, mate. Nah, on hips. You just dip into it. Yeah. Okay, cool. So dip, you can dip into it now as quick as you want. Okay, yeah. So we're starting to see that pattern between yeah, yeah. the two. You've got a guy using his stretch shortening cycle a little bit more. 
guy using it a little bit less. But in the hip, yeah, yeah. because at the ankle, Callum was using it really well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so with pretty much everybody with jumps, I start off with seated jumps, because it makes it really simple, because there's no load in your legs. So we're gonna start off two-legged. You can use your arms as well. From here, no rocket, and I want it completely static. Straight up like that, and land. <laughs> Make sure you've got a nice, usually I'll do this onto a box, yeah. and it saves your knees a little bit, because we haven't got one. <laughs> I just want to make sure you land it's nice and soft. I think the ropes put you off there. Yeah. You do a really good arm swing, but the ropes just put you off, yeah. Do one more, mate. Better. You see, as soon as you didn't hit the ropes, yeah. everything yeah. came through. <laughs> nice. Okay. <laughs> so what I'm seeing is the, the, the kind of typical you get in you get an extension, but the hips are left, left behind slightly. So whether that transfers to what you're actually doing in the ring, I mean, it might do because when, you, when you're throwing punches right, it's gonna come from the hip. So whether it transfers to the ring is another question, but when I'm looking at the jumps, I get really picky with it and try and really get all the, the hips coming through. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add a med ball to the mix. I think five's gonna be too much. I'll go with a three. What you're gonna do is, this is gonna take the arms out of the equation and it's gonna force you to get all your joints in the right place. So we call it joint stacking. And I mean, that's a pretty much the same concept with the back foot when you're throwing punches, it's joint stacking. You got ankle, knee, hip, obviously through to your shoulder. So you're gonna start with the med ball from the, from the chest. And what I want is extension through. So as you jump, you're gonna extend the med ball up like that. So you can't use your arm swing. It's really gonna force you to get your hips through because if your hips are right there, the ball's gonna go like that. If it's there, it's gonna go up like that. No rock in again, straight from static, and then land. Yeah. And just hold it in front like that when you land, nice and close to you. Don't want it out in front, so put pressure on the back. Have it in on your chest. So yeah, you're gonna press it up as you jump in. Okay, cool. One more. Just really try and get your hips through. There you go. Nice one, Nikolai. Yeah, did you feel it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Push up. Yeah. So you're already trying to, this is what you do, right? You like to rock in, you like to move into your jumps, yeah? yeah. So just start static. Just start. So I don't mind it, but we'll get into that later. So, what, just go straight? Yeah, so you're rocking in a little bit, like that. Yeah. It's exactly the same thing as I do because it works, but I want you to start static. And when you land, bring it back down to your chest. Nice. Do one more, mate, like that. Very good. Cool. Thank right, one more round, I think. Do you, that. Do, do you do that? that yeah. Sure. So, from your perspective as a coach, obviously you use a lot of kind of landmine work. Yeah. I notice you've got the um, this press and stuff like that. Yeah. This is just putting it into a slightly different velocity, but it's exactly the same movement. Yeah. Um, I'll often take it outside and they'll literally throw as well. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Yeah. I like it how you're taking out them little things and little kind of. I do a lot with like the box jumps where people like kind of like try and go up to it or try and use the yeah. complex and everything rather than kind of dipping down and actually using that relationship with the floor. Yeah, yeah. I like that you've done that with Nick like straight away. He's wanting to kind of rock into it. Yeah. This exercise takes it away, so really good. It does. So it's like for me, I'd rather add a constraint and force people to use the right movement rather than just throwing cues at people. Yeah, yeah. So obviously I still, in the end with Callum was like, get the hips involved more, and then that was enough. Yeah. Um, with Nikolai, he was just straight in because of the ball being there, hips yeah. were involved. Um, but I think you'd probably agree, it's better to force uh, movement than it is to cue it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't, I know that from what I coach, so I probably should have said, I coach mostly speed and power, so track and field, um, basketball, vertical jump, volleyball, stuff like that. And then because I'm involved in explosive power and biometrics, I have done like supplementary work with fighters. But my kind of forte is more track and field, basketball, that sort of thing. Yeah. So with queuing and track and field and stuff like that, it's like you don't want to talk too much. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what it's like in boxing. Yeah. I don't know if you just let the lads, let the fighters do what they want yeah. and then try and force those changes. Yeah. But yeah. Min minimum, minimum cues. Exactly, yeah. I just I think confusing people is frustrating. Right, so we're now going to do exactly what you want to do. Yeah. So you want to do it first. Okay. We're going to rock into it. So what I'm trying to see now is, now we add, 
it may be too so so for me no ball mate as well oh, yeah yeah oh, so yeah i'll move that out of your way mate yeah, push my hands or just you can use your hands mate yeah just do what you want rock into it so pick your feet up slightly as well yeah. just a little rock okay. and then go straight up we'll see what you got nice you see it, that he really wants to do that he wants to use that stretch shortening cycle for me as well this this is good because it takes up quite a lot of muscle slack because the lads are starting relaxed yeah, yeah. And then as soon as your feet hit the floor, your muscles have got to yeah, yeah. tense really hard. Nice. Yeah. So both the lads have got that, but I'd, ex I'd expect that. Because yeah. everything they do is always moving, right? Yeah. So they're always taking up that slack. Yeah. So like, what I'm doing with these is you're going, it's a learning process as well. Yeah, yeah. So when you slow the velocity down, it's much easier for the lads to feel those joint positions, yeah. feel the extension. That's why I added the med ball. Yeah. Uh, then the rocking starts to introduce more of the stretch shortening cycle and getting rid of muscle slack very quickly, um, which the lads are both very good at, which is, isn't surprising considering their sport. Uh, so now the next phase with this is just to go single leg. And this is what people usually really struggle with. Um, but actually the transfer might be higher to a lot of sports. So I'm going to come away from the ring for the first rep because I want to teach the movement properly. So we're going to use a bench. I'm going to pull this into the middle of the room here. So again, it's a similar concept to what we've done with the two feet. So we're going to start off concentric so the lads can really learn and feel the triple extension. And then during the session, we're going to get into more stretch shortening cycle, more actual plyometric work. So with this one, I'll come this side so you can see what I'm doing. Start on the bench like so. Make sure I'm not going to break this. You sure? Hands behind your back so you're not getting any help from anything. It's all coming from that front leg. Hands behind your back, you bent right over there. Now, the key here is you pick your bottom foot up. That way you're not going to push off with your toe. So everything comes through that top leg. And land. Reset, toe up. Like that. It's harder than it looks. Yeah. So what you'll feel when you're doing it is it looks, yeah. it looks quite quick. No, this, this is definitely a like, speed strength exercise. So you want to be bent right over the front. That's it, toe up and just push. There you go. Get up there, Cal. Don't use that bottom leg. Okay, and one more. One more, therefore. Yeah. Right. Okay, cool. So, do the other side as well, mate, other leg. Always using the bottom. Say again? Always using the bottom one. He's using the bottom a little bit. Can you see the knee bend? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. But he's not really bouncing into it. So really try and be strict with your bottom leg, mate. So you're just going to lean right. So you're using the knee very slightly. Yeah. Everyone does it. Yeah. But if you really pull your toe up, lean right, so all your weight's on your right leg and just go straight through that right leg. There you go. Okay, cool. So a lot of people will do this and they won't actually even go into the air yeah, yeah. because they just haven't got the speed strength. Yeah, yeah. So you want to bend over a little bit more. That's yeah. good. Just bend over a little bit more. Yeah. There you go. Nice. Three. Just control the landing a bit, mate. You can put your toe down on the landing, just not on the takeoff. Okay. Do one more, mate. Okay, good. So this, this one is like the real teaching aspect before we go onto the ring and do the same thing that we yeah, did yeah. with the double, double foot. Uh, and it's really quite difficult to stay really strict without using that bottom leg. Yeah, yeah. So that's all, that's speed strength really. Yeah. But it's something that I add to a lot of programs for, to start the unilateral work. Mm -hmm. uh, and it really challenges glute med, VMO and the medial hamstrings yeah. as well, which is something that often gets neglected. It's, that. it's, it's very strict and you're taking everything away. So yeah. you play, focusing on that adaptation. If you yeah. just like kind of like doing a single leg, with an arm swing or something like that, they try and get that momentum from, yeah, from there. Yeah, definitely. And taking everything away and really focusing on that. So you get momentum from that from elsewhere, but that's like inherently single leg yeah. is that you're getting momentum from other parts of the body, yeah. the back leg swing, the arm swing, uh, different lateral slings and stuff like that. But what I find with this is it's quite a good bulletproof for, for injuries around single leg work because yeah. you're forced to take the valgus out, you're forced to use glute yeah. med and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but with speed as well, yeah. um, rather than doing just like a single leg squat. Mm. Yeah. All right, so we're going to do the same thing, but off the edge of the, exactly what we did with two legs. So this time you haven't got any tension in your leg. So it's one knee up, static, you can use your arms. 
and then land two legs. <laughs> Lots of practice, that's all it is. So, usually on swing, sort of like, can we do the rocking set as well? Or this one I want static, static, and then we'll do the rocking after, yeah. Up, yeah. yeah. And then land two legged. Did you know what? That's impressive, but land two legged. Yeah. So you can pick up some bilateral issues, so, sorry, each side issues here as well. You come off now. Yeah, you see, she's struggling a lot more on that left. Yeah, she's yeah. doing some weird stuff. Yeah, yeah. So for you, yeah, it's bad, yeah. <laughs> for you as a coach, you can obviously see that difference here and it might lead to some rehab work, prehab work. Make the landing a little bit wider, a little bit Fine. softer, yeah. Keep going with the left, mate. I want all the reps on the left first. Nice. A little bit more of a squat when you land. There you go, yeah. And I'm only doing that because I don't want anyone picking up any irritated knees, you know. Do the other side now, mate. Wanted to do the single leg landing. No, no, I was just saying you wanted to do it. Yeah, yeah go on to double leg, yeah, yeah. I'm over there. He has a um, trouble with his left knee. Left no, knee. not the right knee. Oh, is it right knee? So, good job, mate, good job. So, what you're seeing is, you know when it's really strict here, mm. um, you get uh, less valgus movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then just the rock in, adding a little bit of velocity, you can then see that really yeah. manifests itself. Yeah. So with both guys, you can see which side there, there is yeah. possibly an issue. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying it's causing an issue for the, for the guys now, but it might yeah. be if you catch it early in case yeah. you start getting some, some knee issues. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, that with certainly with the two-legged jumping, I see with really good guys, they do get a little bit of internal rotation with their knees. Yeah. Um, the issue is what comes from that. Mm. The really powerful guys tend to get a little bit of that roll in because yeah. they're actually using a little bit of that mm. uh, elastic mechanism on the inside. But with the guys, you know, they've got to, mm. got to fight 12 rounds. It's like yeah, you don't yeah. want to do anything that's risky, any movements that yeah, are risky. Yeah. Cool. 100%. Right, so that's single leg done as well. You know what, that's, that's really good. <laughs>